For generations, American sportsmen have ventured to the great American Northeast in search of two of the most elusive of all game birds, the American woodcock and the ruffed grouse. Now we have come to the eastern part of Maine to a little town called Grand Lake Stream, to a lodge that we found that's very well known for its grouse and woodcock hunting, Lean's Lodge. And our host and owner of Lean's Lodge is Charles Dreiser. Now Charles, tell us a little bit about your lodge and the area that we'll be hunting. Thanks a lot, Bruce. First I want to really welcome to the Shotgun Journal to Lean's Lodge. It's an honor to have you here. Uh, Lean's Lodge has been in the grouse and woodcock world for quite a while. Tom Wilner actually in his book uh, uh, Timber Doodle talked about hunting at Lean's Lodge and cooking certain recipes with Stanley Lean in the dining room. Um, we're located uh, right along the New Brunswick border in Maine, uh, pretty far east. In fact, the county that we're located in, Washington County, is called Sunrise County. Uh, the sun hits Cadillac Mountain in Sunrise County first uh, upon rising in the United States. Well, the sun's well up this morning. Now, Charles has brought us to a place that we're hoping will hold some woodcock. So now all we've got to do is get out into the thick stuff and see if we can find them. Z's on point up here. Okay. Marty, you come in here with me. All right. Bruce, go up around the left. Come on in. Okay, I'm in the opening. Here goes, here goes. I don't know. I don't know if I got him or not. He come right through the sun, and I shot right into the trees, right in here. No, Bruce, I think you got that bird. I... He didn't come straight down, but he kind of glided down. At least I, I didn't see him flush, but I saw an object in the air going down. I believe you got that bird. See if we can get the dog on him. Yeah, it's tough right in here. But he's got to be, you know, if, if I hit him, he's got to be right in this little area. Now, if he's not here, then I Look, didn't hit him. Bird. Z's got the bird. Oh, really? Yep. Well, I well, wasn't I all him. that I convinced, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, Bruce, I told you you got that bird. Well, I wasn't all that convinced that I did. Well, I, you, you know, know I, mean? I, I just saw it going, you know, yeah. going, and it looked like it was going down, but I couldn't really tell. First, there you go, buddy. Woodcock right. of the hunt. All right. Beautiful. Yes. Nice well, shot, too. Well, let's see, we're allowed three apiece. We need five more. As usual, you're one up on it. <laughs> well, not as usual, <laughs> but I just got off to a lucky start. Well, hey, that's a nice shot. You know, it, it's, it, it's hard to shoot in this thick cover, and we're going to have to get accustomed to that right. because, you know, these birds are, I mean, they're, you see them and then you don't right. see them. Well, you know, Marty and I both uh, like shooting very tight chokes mm -hmm. out in open, uh, you know, for dove and duck and things like that. But in here, you don't want a tight no, choke. No, no, you really you don't. You know, that shot there was probably 12 yards. Yeah. I'm shooting a skeet and an IC. Well, mainly because if a grouse comes up, I want that a little tighter for the grouse. But in here on these woodcock, man, cylinder, anything, it'll spread that shot because they're going to be quick windows. Well, and as you just saw, it'll actually push through the tree. Right. I and mean, you shot right through that evergreen. Right. Didn't know whether you got the nope, bird. Wasn't sure at I, you all. You know, I saw him glide, and you mm -hmm. know, I, I thought you did, and yeah. sure enough, sure enough, Z found him. So let's well, go see if we can get another one. Let's do it. Hey Bruce, we got a point. Come out this way, Marty. You want me out to your right? Yeah, Marty, get out to the right there. Okay. Bruce, move up into that opening. I think we got an opening up there. All right, I'm moving over to get a little more open. Okay, I'm in the opening. Up oh, there he goes. Ah, we got a bird. Feathers. See the feathers? So we got him. We just, there you go. Good boy. Good boy. Wow. All right. Kind of a quick window, wasn't it? Sure was. 
I'll tell you, what happened is the dog was on point in here, and I positioned myself for a small window here. And I, you know, you've got a 10 yard window here. That's it. From the time you see the bird come up till I shot right in the edge of this evergreen, I mean, it was quick. Well, you know what? Your old skeet shooting experience yep. paid off a little bit. There. Yep. That's a great shot, buddy. You know, I'm, I'm over here, I'm fighting, I'm putting, you know, I finally get to a hole. And Charles says, there he goes, boom. And I'm like, oh, geez. It's all over. I hope he didn't come my way because I didn't see him. <laughs> nice well, what shot. what do we have guy. here? You got a dollar bill? Yeah, yeah. Actually, Let's see I what do. we've got. Um, you know, it's strange. And everybody, why do I have a dollar bill? Well, the way to sex these birds, believe it or not, is to take a dollar bill and lay the beak up next to it. And if the beak comes up even with the bill, that typically means it's a male. If it extends out a little bit further, a quarter of an inch or so further, it would be a female. Now, a female in a woodcock is slightly larger than the male right. anyway. Right, and has a little longer beak. Yeah, just a little longer beak. But that's right. one way to do it. I mean, take a dollar bill and, you know, for uh, you guys with lots of money, you can take a hundred dollar bill, but <laughs> the dollar... And I think really the guy does. that shoots the bird gets the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go see if I can get my dollar I'll, back. I'll, I'll have, it, have it for measuring on your next one. <laughs> After years in the making, the most exciting wing shooting action ever put on video is now available. Learn to hit dove, wild pigeons, ducks, geese, quail, and pheasants. Join Bruce and Marty as they teach you the finer points of wing shooting like gun fit, flushing, decoying, and passing shots. See what the shooter sees through the eye camera. Only $24.95 plus shipping in chapter DVD and VHS. Call or visit ShotgunJournal.com. Hey Bruce, we got a point. Dog's on point right in front of me, Marty, ten yards. Man, it looks like there's a little window there, but I'm afraid I'll flush the bird if I go to it. What kind of position you in, Marty? I'm good. The dog's right in here. You can't see me in the thick stuff. I've stopped here because if he flushes, I have a little Oops, There he goes. Went out the other way. Okay. Well, again, the dog was on point here. I picked a little window, just happened to pick the wrong window. Charles went around that way, hoping the bird would flush back into my little window. He flushed out another window the other side. The woodcock is related to shorebirds, but no longer has any attachment to his oceanic roots. He has big round eyes that are set high and back on his head and by some quirk of evolution, his brain is upside down and his ears are located in front of his eyes. He has a long prehensile bill, which is perfect for probing for his favorite food, the earthworm. As the woodcock takes flight, their wings make a very distinctive whistling sound. The rapid beep, beep, beeping sound is made by air rushing through the outer three primary feathers of their wings. The woodcock's range is primarily eastern North America, from southern Canada to the Gulf states. The bird breeds in the northern part of their range and migrates south in the winter. The female usually lays four eggs. The male has no role in hatching or raising the chicks. At about six weeks of age, the chicks go out on their own to join the ranks of their other solitary brethren. I'm going to go all the way around to the right, Bruce. He's pointed right in here, Marty. I have a little window, not much. I've got one to the right. Have you got any to the left? I have nothing hardly left. Well, what we've done here is we have the dog on point. Now, Marty and I saw a little bit of a hole here, not much, about as much as you can expect up here, though. And Charles has got the dog on point over in here. We, we can't even see it. But he's going around 
and hopefully the bird will flush our way. I think he flushed, Marty. Don't, nope. whoa, woodcock, right over your head. Ah, oh, you got him on your second shot, Marty. <laughs> I got him marked right in here, right in there. Bruce, I'm gonna tell you something. I looked up when you yelled woodcock, <laughs> that thing was making a beeline for my nose. It looked like it. <laughs> and of course, I, now I'm, you know, I'm all backwards. I get spun around. <laughs> this thing was doing that. Uh, <laughs> and the first time I pulled the trigger, I went this way, he went that way, so I probably missed him six feet. <laughs> but it looked like I, you know, I got only the second. Uh, the yes, second I've got him marked. Now all we got to do is uh, get Hank and Charles up here. I'm going to stay right here for just a minute and keep that line. Okay. Why don't you go straight out? All right. Dead bird. Good boy. Good boy, Hank. <laughs> Good boy. Okay, we got it. Here you go, Marty. Here's your bird. All right, man. Thank Good you. job. Nice shooting. All right. Hey, Bruce. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got your dollar somewhere if I haven't lost it. Well. No, there it is. You know, if we're lucky, at the end of the day, we'll be even. We'll end up, nobody has any money, but we got woodcock. That's what we came for. Well, as you can see, we've changed location. We've actually moved from a heavily wooded area to a farm here in eastern Maine. And, you know, as we were coming in, I saw some apple trees on the side of the road. In fact, there's one right here behind us. And Charles, this looks like it's an area that may not only have some woodcock, but also some grouse, too. Absolutely. Uh, this old farm is actually still being manicured a little bit. So as you can see, we've got some nice open lanes, and we've got a really diverse cover here. We've got apples throughout the farm. We've got our popple and aspen trees. We've got some alders in the bottom, and we've got some pine. So this kind of combination cover uh, could very well hold both the grouse and the woodcock. Now, Charles tells us this dog's about five years old. Is that correct? That's right. About five years old. So we're looking for great things out of Hank. Well, he also says that he is an Elhu line oh. pointer. And I can tell you. Very good line. It, that's one of the best lines that's ever been developed in the world. So he's got the blood. take him home with me too because yeah. he's very well trained. <laughs> We're going to end up with a kennel. I'd, right? I'd love to have a kennel full of these good, well trained ones. <laughs> well Marty, this kind of feels like walking Whoa, down look at, look at, look at. a sidewalk. Looks like we have a point. That was quick. That was very quick. Wow. Well what the trouble is, is my gosh. the sidewalk ended right here though. All right. Marty, if he does flush, be ready because he's not going to stay out here in this open, but a heartbeat for you. Here he comes. <laughs> hey, he come out, did that, he did a zig, I did a zag. He went to the right, I went to the left. Well, I know how that feels. I never touched him. <laughs> well, you know, I, as soon as the gun went off, yeah. I reached in my pocket to get that dollar back up. <laughs> but you know yeah. what? It'll start costing you 50 cents when they continue to fly like that. Oh, oh, well, 50 cents for a miss, huh? Oh, well, at least, <laughs> well, at least. <laughs> that was a clean <laughs> miss. Well, you know what? You're not going to get all of these things. No. I'm telling you, I mean, no. this is, you know, a lot of the birds that we hunt out west seem to be a little more predictable. Right. I mean, they flush, they basically got pretty much a straightaway uh, flight right. line to them, and they don't have all of this tree cover. I mean, you know, so, when you watch a woodcock, I mean, the thing is yeah. flying like this. Well, he came out and realized he was out in the open in a place he does not like at all and just immediately dove right back in yeah. there. And just as I'm getting a bead on him, well, he made, he, a, yeah, he yeah, made yeah, the dive yeah, in, I'm, and I I'm, shot over know. here, and he went over there. <laughs> but the nice thing about a woodcock is they are predictable on a couple of things. And one of them is that he's not all that frightened. He's probably sitting down there. In fact, we're going to go down. Charles we said, can, we, we can, can probably him. go down there and point that bird again. So I may have another chance at this woodcock. Wait a minute. 
to the point in this. Yeah. You know, you can't yeah. emphasize the value of these deeper collars. Well, as thick as it is, that's yeah. the only way to recognize the oh boy. here. Back in the thick stuff. Your way, Marty. Get him? Yeah, I got him. Well done. Had to let him get by and kind of level it out a little bit, though. All right. I had nothing. I mean nothing in here. Yeah, I had no shot coming into there, Marty. <laughs> I was, I was bird dogging for you in there. I'll tell Boy, you. Boy, you know. Because there I was mean, no place well, to shoot. We've got, got a lane right here yes. where we has been forested out. Thank you. Great, thank you. I'd say that that was a female. Yeah, that's well, look a pretty at the length beak. of that beak. Yeah. I mean, or that bill. That's uh, right. That's that's quite, quite long. long. Uh, quite you long. Know, and and a heavier bird than than right. the male that that we looked at a little bit earlier. Right. Bruce, I've got to tell you now. Look at this. It's easy to see why these birds are almost invisible. Yes. I mean, the colors that they have are really the exact colors that you find down on the forest floor, and they really blend in. Sure I mean. Do. You know, I, I, if I was going to be a camouflage designer, I might, I might call it woodcock camo or something. But uh, look, at the, I mean, the colors yeah. are just, are just exactly right. Now we're hunting these birds in their resting area. They've been out feeding overnight. They go off to a feeding area where there are more likely worms. Then they come back into this. It's not quite as dense a cover as we were hunting earlier, but this is an area that they come in and rest during the day, and they're a lone bird. Although you'll find one or two. They're not together, they're just close. It's just an area where they're resting. They're very individual birds. Let's go see if we can find another individual. This looks like a great spot for them. <laughs> That's it, hard to keep a hat on in this country. <laughs> if you can. Got a point. All right, I got a little window here. Oh, he's looking left, Bruce, looking your way. I'm coming around this little tree. There it goes. There oh. we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, Marty. <laughs> he went straight up like a helicopter. <laughs> I saw that. And all I had was this. <laughs> Can't shoot through that. Well, he made a mistake and stayed in this lane. Well, it was hard. I mean, when he went back down, I really just lost yeah. sight of him. You, obviously, you got him. Well, yeah, yeah, I got him. But this one was just a poke. I mean, I'll tell you, I, just, I just poked the gun up and shot. I didn't see any lead. Then he leveled out a little. All right. That's where he made his mistake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these things, to be as little as they are, can really do some gyrations they in the sure air. They sure can. You know, I mean, we've, just we've seen, like I mean, we've seen all sorts of yes. twists and turns and ups and downs. <laughs> now, Charles and Dees has got him down there. Well, stick around. We'll be right back with some woodcock hunting from Lean's Lodge in Maine. You know, it, it really takes a lot of dedication to be a woodcock hunter. I mean, we've, we've had a couple of wonderful days here in Maine and, you know, even going out trying to get two limits is really, really difficult. I just can't remember the last time I've had so much fun and I feel so tired, but I'm ready to keep going. Point. We've got a point here. This is the importance of a beeper collar. We can't hardly even see the dog in this stuff, but that constant beep is telling us that he's on point. Now, 
the problem is getting in there and getting a shot. Well, he's looking to the right. He's looking out in here. Okay. Is where he's where he's looking. So. Well, why don't you stay out here? Let me yeah, go in there look around here. and see if he comes out that way. Okay. He can push the bird. All right. I'm going in slightly in front of the dog. It's the only opening I've got. Woodcock, up high! Well, he just did a little push and block move, which you don't do a lot of in woodcock shooting. But when you got a real thick area like this, you could actually have hunters come in. Now, Bruce and Charles worked around. There were two birds in here. I came up on this point and served as a blocker. And sure enough, as thick as it was in there, Charles kicked the bird out. He came out and got up into the edge of this open field. And I was able to make a nice shot on him. You did get that bird, didn't you, Marty? Yeah, beautiful female, Bruce. <laughs> All right. Well, the push and block does work. But occasionally, you get a few battle scars from it. I think I got cut. <laughs> and it's a little thick in there. <laughs> yes, it is thick. <laughs> you know, Bruce, this woodcock hunt looks like it might have put a couple of extra dings and dents in that Ithaca Classic Doubles of yours. No, Marty. Those are memories. <laughs>